Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us tmasso at the 1916company.com for purchase pricing and availability questions regarding this watch. And today we're discussing one of my favorite types of watch to review, the more is more execution. And my goodness, is there more to love with this 2014 50 piece limited edition titanium rubber and red gold IWC Aquatimer Perpetual Calendar Digital Date Month. 2014 was a year that IWC redesigned all of the Aquatimers, and that was back in the day when IWC would devote one model year to redesigning one full model line, and this was the flagship that year. IWC even noted that with the exception of the World War II b -er, this was the second largest ever IWC purpose-built wristwatch, and that's really saying something. And my goodness, is it a marvel. 49 millimeters in diameter, the watch is 19.6 millimeters thick, and from lug tip to lug tip, 57.7 millimeters, with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. As mentioned, the case is made of sapphire front and back, rose gold case back and bezel, rose gold hardware along the center, but the case band itself is actually rubber coated titanium. So there's a lot going on here. We'll throw it on my wrist of 16 centimeters in circumference and well, I'm gonna give myself some clearance here. As an instrument, it works quite well. It's very legible, it's very large, it's hard to miss to be perfectly honest, but as something to wear every day in earnest, this would be comical. I recommend that if you wanna wear this every day and not look clownish, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a wrist of 18 centimeters circumference because my goodness is this thing huge. It is massive. Now because of the black rubber coated lugs, it almost reads visually as a lugless watch. Uh, you can see on the wrist though, this thing brooks no petite forearms. We'll do a quick loom shot here, but let me remove the minute hand. It's kind of superimposed with the hour hand right there. I'm just going to move it so you can see the hour hand. Now, when fully loomed, the watch is a formidable thing. As you can see, it has quite a bit of luminescence, including a running small seconds. So, you know, if your dive timer is running in the dark, you can also see that the hour hand is blue. So, you know, not to confuse it with the minute hand. We have an internal rotating, ratcheting, unidirectional rotating bezel. Now, I can line that up with the minute hand, and I've got a timer that I can use more naturally in the depths or in the dark than the chronograph itself. The watch includes a strap that is large and purpose-built, integrated into the case band. We have a little bit of a cross hatching, or we could maybe call it a geometric undulation. Taking a look at the bottom, you can see that there is some evacuation at the root of the strap to make it more flexible and ventilate the wrist. And we have the pull tab quick release system built in so you can quickly and easily remove this strap. And in fact, it will even leave you the option of using a conventional strap here, provided it has a 22 millimeter spacing, because the mechanism for the quick release is built into the strap, not the case, which is a very nice feature. Taking a look at the buckle, it's probably the only minimal and simple part of the whole watch. We have fasting, we have satination, we have some polished bevels and a polished pin. And as you could see, it BRO, Brogioli, clasp and bracelet manufacturer down in Italian speaking, Switzerland. They've been a long time supplier to IWC. We have vulcanized rubber coatings for the crown chronograph pushers, the lugs and the mid case. Remember underneath this case band, it is titanium. What appears as though it might be a helium escape valve is actually the housing for the differential system that underpins the unidirectional rotating bezels. That's what that is right there. It's a little cover for the differential and you can see one, two, three, four, five. Yep, there you go. 60 click bezel, but big chunky clicks. We have a little bit of a variation here between media blast, polish, and satin. Like I said, more is more. So we have all three finishes here. We have these little black bolts that are fixing the differential cover in place. Now the watch features a caliber 89801 manufacturer movement. And one of the qualities of it is that it's a flyback chronograph. You can see at the top, we have a mono counter that includes overlapping chronograph minutes and chronograph hours. 
so it balances the dial a little bit, which has a cruciform symmetry. On the top, we've got our chronograph. On the bottom, we've got our leap year indicator, as well as our small seconds. We've got a double-digit date, we've got a double-digit month, and this digital portrayal of the perpetual calendar was inspired by the IWC-built Joseph Paul Weber pocket watches with jumping digital displays from the late 19th century. As I mentioned, this is a flyback chronograph, so reset and restart without first stopping. We have gold hands, a gold frame, for for the two sub-registers, north and south, and then gold individual indices. And we have concentric patterns inside the sub-register. Also note that we have individual minutes calibrated. This is not just a 12-hour register. That is a 60-minute chrono register, not 30 minutes, but 60 minutes. Of course, this is the IWC Kurt Klaus perpetual calendar system, albeit an unconventional portrayal of it. So here I have the ability to quick set the date and via the date also quick set the month. It is mechanically programmed. All you need to do is make sure you match the date and the month for the leap year cycle you are in. Remember the summer Olympic year such as 2024 is the leap year. Okay, now you can see there are little honeycomb shaped grills that show you the underlying discs for the double digit display. And this dial has quite a bit of depth, but the movement on the reverse side has even more. So yes, it does have a 68 hour power reserve. And yes, it is a 50 piece limited edition. You can also see it is 100 meters water resistant, which is sufficient to make this a diver. It's not, not an ultra deep diver, but it is a diver. The movement based on the 89,000 series chronograph, automatic winding using a four pawl Peloton winding system, which you can see right there, a very durable bi-directional winding system that's highly efficient, created by IWC watchmaker Albert Peloton in the late 40s and implemented in the early 50s. It was the progenitor of every magic lever and pawl-based winding system that came after, including the Seiko magic lever system of the 1950s. It is very efficient, very shock tolerant, and very reliable. It also winds bi-directionally. We have a four hertz beat right there on a free sprung balance with the adjustments done using variable inertia weights on the balance rim. You can see that it is adjusted to a high horology standard five positions. You'll find that on chronometers as well as high end watches of all stripes. And then you can see that this is a 51 joule movement that is mostly mechanically finished, but to such a high standard that it's quite attractive. It has great depth as well. And it's a column wheel chronograph with a vertical clutch. So. The feel of the column wheel is very crisp and satisfying. And due to the vertical clutch, when you start the chronograph, there's no jump or stagger, so it's very precise. And because there's also no additional wear and tear on the movement, you can leave it running if you like to have a big chronograph center seconds hand running on a continuous basis, just to make it a more animated watch. There is almost too much here to love, and my goodness, will you love it if you have the wrist to match. Reach out to Team Also at the 1916company.com for purchase and pricing details.